They're the liberal rednecks. They like cornbread, but sex they care way too much, but don't give a fuck. They're the liberal rednecks that makes some people upset, but they got three big old dicks that you can suck. Yeah, we've done that. It's not on our current tour, uh, which you can find, by the way, at wellreadcomedy.com, W-E-L-L-R-E-D, comedy.com. We, we're announcing new dates every day. We're super pumped to get back on the road. Uh, so Sorry, shameless plug there. Yeah, so you were at the American Comedy Company. Great club, great city. Yeah, the city's wild. That's the, that's the one that's like downtown, right? Yeah. Like right across, we stayed in that hotel right across the street from it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. The solo Hell last. Bar. We partied. That city's wild. Yeah. Who are you with? Uh, Akash. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's been taking me to do feature and hosting, so it's been good. Been bouncing around. Yeah. What's the What's the temperature of the world right now? Not like it. Not like literally. I know it's like kind of on fire because of global warming, but like, you know, what are I shows mean, like? We people need are out. There was all every show was pretty much sold out. Yeah. And they're just having a good time, and especially like july 4th in san diego like every third person has like a american flag bikini and you're like fucking all right even in san diego like i thought that was just a us thing no <laughs> that's a military town they got oh yeah you're right you're right you're right you're right yeah uh hey this is tushar saying everybody you know him you love him the indian outlaw himself has returned drew is traveling or some such he's doing some shit he'll be back anyway tushar's here yeah oh there you are tushar Two shards back, everybody. Back. Oh, you're me. in Alabama. See, I never know with you. You're yeah. a trailblazing fella. You're in San Diego. You're back in New York. You're in California. You're you're now you're back in Alabama. You at your mama, mama house. I'm with, I'm with my mama um here for a week and then going up to Jersey for a wedding and then doing Baltimore Magoobies at Baltimore. And then uh go I'm gonna be out in LA the first week of August, Trey. Oh, really? So let's hang. Well, we are too. Yeah. You're gonna be there the first week of August? Yeah. Yeah. I am. We're I'll be, be out there. Uh oh, that's yeah, we can say it. It's fine. Yeah. We're gonna be shooting some more Comedy Central sketches that week. So we'll be kind of, you know, busy, especially during the day. Cause typically yeah. when we do those, they're like it's yeah, like yeah, 12 yeah. hour days. But I mean, still we'll figure it out. It's supposed to be like two two of those days that week. So some okay. other whatever. We'll, and I, obviously I'll be here. Yeah the whole time you know yeah i'm uh, that, so i'm filming whatever. a pilot out there um for myself but it's basically uh a show where i interview someone and draw them as i interview them okay that's so, pretty sweet yeah for those that don't know two is pretty handy with the uh pencils wait are pencils your medium i don't know shit about art do you use pencils or charcoal what do you i use, use charcoal and pastels mm -hmm. and i'm i'm starting to mess with uh, paint how do you determine that what you use primarily you just i mean for something like this i gotta use something that i'm like comfortable with i'd like to ideally use paint but there is a, a true hierarchy of like oh you use acrylic paint you ain't shit oh, right? really? like there's like a, in art there's also a uh, is that like a a mime? oil painting like the top o of the heat? oil paint is the hardest because it takes the longest to dry there's it's less uh forgiving in terms of like how to do it you have to wait after every what's coat. the prop comic of of painting or prop or mine guess, uh, is that is that acrylic i guess it would just be yeah i guess acrylic or finger painting <laughs> or like, yeah well, right. where's but drawing fall on the art spectrum I mean, when you ask art, real artists, they're like, they're like, no, anything, man. You just, yeah. you just connect with the thing. So real artists usually like it's indifferent to them. It's like how what your approach is. Well, but. yeah. Please let me go back on saying like I, I said that because that's just the the general like consensus. I, if you're a carrot top's amazing. Like I can't, I couldn't right, call right, him right, in right. dream. I, I didn't mean like, but like people are like, oh, you know, puppeteers, mimes, blah 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 blah. But like, yeah, if anything done well, who gives a shit? Right, 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 right. But yeah, it starts with pencil and paper, and then you work your way up to like charcoal, maybe. And there's there's pastels, there's watercolor, there's I mean, it's a whole it's a whole world. Hobby Lobby ain't around just just like for no reason. Like those aisles all, right. all have their own like world. Are you plugged into all that? I'm starting to, man. It's like it's it's just whole other universe where 
I feel like um, I feel like an open micer. I'm just like, what? What's this? And what's right. this? And so do you know of, like artists and stuff? You got like artist buddies now? I'm starting to yeah find some buddies who are artists, and they're what's, wild. Uh, what is that like? Yeah, I don't, I don't know any like because oh, we're not artists. Like, no, I, well, it's like, like visual, visual art, but even like yeah, right. <laughs> like it's I, it, it's always i would never know exactly how to put this because yeah i mean i do think comedians are artists and of course are artists and yeah, all yeah, yeah, that, yeah but like we're not just like you know regular artists art like yeah, yeah art artists museum art, stuff like yeah they draw shit yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah those type of sculpt like shit. you don't go to a museum and press a button and hear a brian Regan joke you know what <laughs> i mean not yet buddy artists. not yet but yeah, yeah. so <laughs> i and i don't know any i don't think of those types of artists so some i hope somebody doesn't hear this it's a friend of mine get insulted because they do that shit but yeah other than you tushar so yeah what are uh what, what's that like hanging out with they're what i mean i think generalize them for me. yes generalize paint generally. hey paint them with a broad brush <laughs> there you go nice um they uh they're typically like um i mean they spend a lot of time alone right yeah because yeah. they have to by nature that's how heroin works doing. So they're kind of like writers in that sense where they they whenever I meet them, they're letting loose or they're like a bartender and they're, you know, it's kind of the same game. Um, but a lot of them are, are you know, artists or met, like they they like getting fucked up. They Most of them are potheads, like from mm. what I can tell. Um, I know a handful. I met a few in New York. And um, the cool thing about art is there's no limitation Meaning like if you go, like the first time I ever went into an art class was in New York, the student art league. And I walk in and it's like a, it's just a drawing class, like basics of drawing. And I was so disoriented because I walk into this, this large studio and there's two, um, there's two little stages set up and then easels all around each one. And there's music playing and there's like a hippy dippy lady. And then like the teacher was just like really cool, laid back dude. He looked clearly stoned and people are just setting up. They're setting up their thing. They're sitting there. They're waiting for the show thing to start. And uh, and he was and I was like, where do I set up? Because I didn't know what was going on. And the teacher was like, OK, the long forms over here, the short forms over here. And I was like, what does that mean? It was like, just pick short form because you, you're starting. So I sat down and then um and then he was like, all right, class is ready to start models. And these two people came out of the back in robes and one look. Yeah, it must have been a 260 pound black lady. She came, comes Hell and yeah. pops herself in the long form. And then there's just like a homeless looking dude. And I think they're both probably home, borderline homeless, like, of, for, I guess, doing that. And they just they sat and the short form, the guy held the poses for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 one minute, one minute, one minute, two minutes, three minutes. And the goal there is you have to capture that person in that form. So they're naked, which is kind of alarming if you've never been in that environment. And they'll just hold a form like this and then you draw it quickly and then change, draw. And then the long form, the lady just kind of picked a pose that everyone kind of liked and then just had to hold it for three hours with breaks and stuff. But in the class itself, there's these like, the range of people and the personalities, it's kind of all over the place. It's like super old people who are just crushing it and knocking these things out quickly. And then there's like young business people who are giving a shot. So the cool thing about art is it's somewhat like comedy, but comedy weeds you out pretty quickly. Um, but it's it's like it doesn't anyone who's the, the demographics and the range is so it was like beautiful. Like it was just all types of people. You, drawing. you think you think comedy weeds you out qu quicker than like drawing shit like that because i feel well, like you could just draw at home and be get good at yeah, it comedy yeah, that's you true. need you need to get passed by your friends pass by the club pass by yourself like you need to have the material like eventually it could weed you out i guess but um i just feel like if you go on stage and you're just like man whatever you, it could still be like well you know he did okay but that was kind of that was that was borderline passable but like you know if you really suck at drawing a fat naked black lady <laughs> like that's gonna you know like that's gonna stick out you know what I'm saying? Like that. Just, yeah, yeah. And why, yeah. why do they always have to be naked too? Like, that's just such a cliche you see in like sitcoms, like, you know, Will Ferrell walks in, unrobes himself and they're nude, but like, but that's real. Like that's legit. It's real. I mean, yeah. I, I had hit me. I was just like, what the hell? And I wanted to giggle because I'm a child. I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> there you go. And then after about an hour of that, you're just like, okay, I gotta, I gotta practice. Like there's a whole right. set of things to learn. And when you're, when you're doing quick form, 
you have to there's proportions that are like mathematically this this area to this area to this is always in thirds right. in every human face there's right. ratios where the end of the lips always hit the middle of the eyes yeah. there's like you know there's just things that you can do and you have to build it in layers like it's not just going to come out like a printer right so like right. the whole game is to learn like the proportions of the body where the skeleton like lays over and um I took some comics in there once, like a couple of comics on my birthday. And it was really fun because just to have their commentary while doing it and just being uncomfortable, it's just, it's just pretty fun to do. Are, are people watching you while you're drawing this? Yeah. I mean, people That's, behind you, like it's just right. seated. It's just people are sitting and then there's like a couple of people always kind of wandering around and taking breaks. So you're, it's like a vulnerability. Yeah. Cause I was about to say like, I obviously people were watching me when I'm telling my jokes. But I don't like it if people are watching me while I'm sitting there trying to write them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. a little bit different of a situation, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Right. Um, how big of a part of it is, or how much have you ran into? I feel like a lot of people, myself included, I'm guilty of this. Have this part of the stereotype of like art, you know? So even the way I said it, art is uh, art <laughs> is like. Uh, there was a story recently, me and Mark covered it on uh, Weekly Skews. There, it's uh, this, some big artist, his latest piece sold for like $75,000. No, it was me and Corey. That was yeah, I was, on, on there, I was about to say, was, yes, I was about to say. I was guest hosting this. for Mark. Some big artist, he's, his latest piece sold for like $75,000 or something like that. And it was an invisible sculpture. It was literally physically nothing nothing there nothing there nothing like this is an invisible sculpture it is what your mind's eye makes it and you couldn't just buy it for seventy five thousand dollars. you had to commit like sign a paper committing to all these like rules of ownership which was like it must always be displayed in a four by four empty space or whatever so it so that it every it's the experience is equivalent for everyone or whatever like that and it, but it's like but physically speaking it's literally <laughs> ideally nothing. you would imagine it up my own butt because right. that's where i created yeah, right. it yes that <laughs> that type of shit i think of when i think of like high art christ especially. suspended in piss like yeah, that's where my was, brain immediately goes there was another one that was like uh a banana peel nailed to the wall yeah was like one hundred fifty thousand dollars or something like that. it's a that's a real example what's that a commentary on fuck if i consumerism probably <laughs> right i don't know yeah. like uh god damn chiquita who the fuck no you know slapstick yeah. comedy the death of it <laughs> right, right, right but the, the thing is <laughs> well like i think of that type of shit when it yeah, comes to like high-end art especially and i'm just wondering how i, I don't know i how mean you feel I, about all that imagine if you're in a room with like a thousand pieces of thing uh, art you've made with different mediums and you're like i'm trying to push the limit in myself I mean, it's only a matter of time before you go kind of cuckoo and you're like, this is an invisible pe Like it just turns to that. And yeah. But more people importantly, give you $85,000. Yeah. It. Like Who's he's the people, crazy person. Yeah. The craziest thing about art, you know, NFTs and just this whole new world of like digital art is like, it effectively is a tax haven for drug cartels, rich yeah. people. And it's, it's, oh, um, I didn't know that. That's a long standing thing though, right? That's Money long, so like art is one of the best ways for high high. Because you can just say whatever like what, mafia yeah. and shit. They've all art has been a money laundering shit thing for like a really you can long just, time. Because you can just say this was worth I paid eighty this much million for dollars. Yeah, yeah. Right, you right. Know? And yeah. instead of having to fuck with eighty million dollars, you've got a painting in a warehouse or whatever, yeah. you know, like yeah. And it holds anyway. its value as long as you're willing to hold right. its value. And then with uh, NFTs, like di digital art, where people can just transfer money digitally, that is becoming like, it's now opened up the world to anyone globally who is trying to clean their money. <laughs> like there's no better way to sell a piece of, couple of pieces of art and flush out a couple million. Um, but that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I'm trying to become part of the drug dealing via art. Yeah. Eventually. Sure. I take their money. <laughs> hell. Uh, we talked about NFTs briefly on here before Corey and Drew were trying to explain them to me, and I could have just went. I, no, no, no. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I wasn't trying to explain shit to you. Okay. I don't know a goddamn thing about them. Drew was trying to explain. Okay. For the record, I never went back and checked. I guarantee you that motherfucker was at least three fourths wrong about everything he said. Okay. Well, I didn't check, double check any of. Them. I could have easily just looked it up, but I never did. Just carried on living my life, generally speaking. But now that you're here, too, as Charles, we do with information that we all get, the time, usually, all yeah, the most time. of the time. I 
Honestly, but now that you're here, can you explain those? I'm going to give it a shot, but I really, I, I don't understand it more than its part. It uses You definitely technology. understand it more than Drew. So let's just get that shit out of, <laughs> out of the way. Yeah, um, so with, with blockchain technology and for, 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 for that new kind of emerging thing that's happened with money, it's, it could be applied to art in the sense of like any digital piece of art can be converted to a, a non-fungible token and i actually set one up uh through mint mint table or mint or something and essentially if i make a piece of art let's say i draw i drew Corey's grandma right so mm -hmm. i have this piece of art that i can take a picture of i can upload it to this this exchange and basically put it for auction i have the option of doing one copy or like five or ten copies i can make an, any number of copies i want and essentially, because you can track it and trace it because of the technology, you're, you can sell and trade it. And the cool part about it is, as an artist, you can get 10% or whatever percent you set of its perpetual sales lifetime. Like if, the, But what if they just, so somebody could screenshot that shit? And then that doesn't count. That doesn't count. Like it's verified yeah, by the token, right? Okay. So you can take a screenshot and it'll just be out there. You can upload it to YouTube and put it on this thing. But at the end of the day, like this it's will like allow a digital you. certificate of authenticity exactly. or something. Exactly. I mean, that's no, it's a perfect way. And to you, it. the artist determine there are five of these in existence there's or there's five only in existence one, or there's 25 or whatever. Yeah. And so, and I'm never, selling never, one for 10,000. I'm selling oh. two for auction. I'm okay. keeping one forever. Well, and, that wasn't that hard to explain. Yeah. I feel like I kind of get it now. Yeah. Drew, yeah. And Drew said none of that. He it. technology. It. He like it's not like it was a hologram of Chadwick Boseman on a little yeah. quarter that you no, put no, on no. the table. It could something. literally be. <laughs> I can't. And that, that's not even a, a. There's. He was way wronger than what even Trey just said. Like, hey, it was just nonsense for 30 minutes. And you just did it in 30 seconds. So. It doesn't matter what the piece is. It could be a hologram, could be a squiggle on a Microsoft paint. It could be a picture of a thing that you took. It doesn't matter what it is. It's as long as it's a digital thing, it's relevant. It's what it's like. It's like it enables basically artists to, to not get fucked when their piece sells for $10,000 and someone turns around and sells it for a hundred million. You know, I'll get 10% of that hundred million technically from this, from this uh, thing, but also it's a bubble. Like supposedly everything's like a bubble. So this will collapse soon or it's already collapsed. Um, but it's exciting. I think now that I've figured out what they are, that's definitely about to collapse. That was the, that's what the industry <laughs> This is the needed. final. Yeah. That same thing. So long, with Bitcoin. NFTs. I found out about it and they were just like, all right, it's not cool anymore. I, I do get remember Drew. Again, he did not make it make sense whatsoever. No, he made it he more confusing. All, I do remember him saying something like, he was like, the first like big example of this, but they weren't even calling it that at the time, was that Wu-Tang album that got sold to that oh, yeah, yeah. Martin, Shkreli. Martin Shkreli, that awful pharmaceutical dick bag. And that is that is what that is, right? That like, wasn't that was, an NFT. That was the but, rights to the album. But isn't it like, isn't that essentially the same concept? They were like, it, it exists. But there's just this one copy, and I it goes to whoever like buys it. You know what I mean? And no, there are no other there's, copies yeah. or whatever. I mean, the oh, good. God damn, fucking Alabama! What happened? Oh. I'm oh, out. You're good now. You're, back, you're back, baby. You're back, now. baby. Last time you froze up, you disappeared. But <laughs> you're all right now. Anyway, yeah, I don't. I'm not sure about the Wu Tang thing. I I think that's maybe similar. I don't know if it's part of this technology or not i don't i definitely don't think it is i think it predates so, yeah. technology i feel like it's more the general concept of it type of thing. yeah but like could you do that with a comedy special you probably wouldn't want to right could i don't you, know you if... just sell you know like the way louis and so many other comics and Corey's done it where you put you you know post your own yeah, special you and want... just directly sell it but you want to sell as many copies of that as possible yeah, yeah, that's the thing you want to keep you want to keep now, you want everyone to hear that material that, that's true but if i put out an album and some dumb fuck like martin screlly was like hey i'll give you a million dollars and nobody else can hear these jokes i'd be like all right cool i'll write some new <laughs> shit you know I'll have fun go. buddy yeah buddy i'll go buy a well, pontoon they... boat and write me another hour you well know? arguably i know you'd have to I'm sure it would have to be part of the deal that you couldn't tell those jokes anymore. I was going to say, it's like, you know, it's kind of like you get paid for a special, but you get to keep doing the, the, the joke. Yeah. Yeah. That would hit. But I'm sure Shkreli wouldn't have that. He would yeah. Yeah. That. Cause I mean, he's that actually would, not that a would dumb defeat fuck. the whole he's purpose. Just, yeah. Right. For sure. 
I mean, you, I, you probably retool them somehow. I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, even if – but here's the deal. Even if that wasn't the case, I can tell you right now, if I wrote a new hour and some dude was like, I'll give you a million dollars for that, I only I can hear it, I'd absolutely – you know, I'd be like, hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, a million bucks, one shot. I, and I'll never be criticized for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Nobody will and you be, can still work like, work it on the road. It, no, yeah, well, even if I couldn't I do feel that, like you couldn't. No, but I'm saying though, a million dollars that gives me the 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 uh, freedom to go write a new act. And again, like I ain't got you saying you've explored no other options. Like, oh, you're saying like if it was between that and or Netflix wants to give you the special, like, then so it'd be this different. guy comes to you first. Yeah. And you're not even allowed to look to try to shop it around elsewhere. Yeah, then I'd do it for a million then I dollars. Think I'm, then I think I'm, yeah, I'm with you. Mi- on that. Yeah, but it if too. it was like, but if you had like options, yeah, if even it was if the a, money was significantly less, yes. I think it might still be worth more money in the long run. Of course, run. of course. If that. if it was a banger and Netflix was going to give me a special, then like that to me would be worth because I'm like, if I get this on Netflix and it's as good as I think it is, I'll turn that into a million dollars. But if exactly, it was, yeah. but if it was just blinded, like I just right. had this new act. Somebody can't, they're like, take it or leave it right now. I, I genuinely, like, there's no way I wouldn't. Cause I'd be like, fucking, I, I'll take this million and then I can just go back on the road. Dude, you know, I'm like, like with a million dollars, I don't even have to book a lot of shit. I can just take the year off, Retire. go do every fucking, every night, dive bar, work in every room, get a new hour. You know, I'm in. Like, of course I'd do it. But yeah, like you said, if it was like that or Netflix, no, I wouldn't. But like, that'd be fucking hard to turn down. For sure. No, I'm with you. I agree um that will never happen because <laughs> i don't it'll never happen i don't think any there i don't think there's any comedian like the wu-tang clan you know what i mean <laughs> that that would be attractive to anybody i literally think like Chappelle. it had to be like Chappelle it's Chappelle. Louis it'd be or Chappelle. Bill Burr or someone like yeah. that and fucking those guys get 20 they wouldn't do it from regular netflix yeah, to yeah put they it wouldn't out. do it i don't it. know man you guys al gore is your fan i mean <laughs> yeah. people like that out there who buy yeah, i don't some. know how much i will Al's give you one million dollars <laughs> just yeah. so no one has to hear this and again <laughs> i could say that oh. i could say that i could say that well hey uh before we get into the next thing which uh i'll go ahead and tease right now is uh is uh Tushar had a little my dinner with Andre situation except for <laughs> <laughs> except for it was with Andre uh, was a crackhead lunatic uh, <laughs> yeah a world famous crackhead lunatic yeah but before we get into that I want to talk about something that's really important to me because Tushar after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers if we've learned anything it's that there's always a catch so when I first heard that Mint Mobile offered premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month well I thought Okay, what's the catch? But after speaking with them and using their service, it all made sense. Of course it did. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only by cutting out retail stores. There's no crazy overhead costs that get passed down to you in the form of mystery fees, the rust proofing of the mobile phone world. Instead, Mint just passes on those sweet, 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 sweet savings directly to you. I've told y'all about this on here several times. I was in uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama, where I barely ever have service, but I did have it on my Mint Mobile phone. It also stacked up. I've got, uh, I won't say who it is that my other phone is with, but it's one of the big, it's one of the big three. And uh, Mint Mobile is just as good, if not better, most of the time. So for people looking for extra savings, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. That's three cups of coffee. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5 g network use your own phone with any mint mobile plan keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts if you're not 100 percent satisfied mint mobile has you covered with their seven day money back guarantee switch to mint mobile get the premium wireless service that you need you deserve you desire starting at just 15 bucks a month to get your new wireless plan for 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free holy shit free Go to mintmobile.com slash wellread. That's mintmobile.com slash wellread, W-E-L-L-R-E-D. Cut your wireless bill, 15 bucks a month. Mintmobile.com slash wellread. Yeah. Mint Mobile number one. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all didn't pay me to say that. I just. (laughs) No, we did not. (laughs) That just came from the heart. Thank you. Oh, all right. 
Well, that hit. You know what also hits? Lucy Nicotine. Lucy Nicotine, longtime sponsor. Glad to have them back. It's a, a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. Research and developed for three years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has created a nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine that comes in three flavors. Wintergreen, cinnamon, pomegranate, all of which hit. And if you ain't into that, they've also got a lozenge, also with four milligrams of nicotine and a lovely cherry ice flavor. All also hits. All, all the flavors hit. Yes, they do. It's convenient and discreet. You can enjoy Lucy anywhere on flights at work, on the go, or even in the gym. I always say this, but this is my personal favorite aspect of Lucy is because, uh, you know, you can't do shit nowhere anymore. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Can't now, outlaw the hits. Yeah, they outlawed the hits years ago. Started with smoking, then vaping came along. I was like, well, I'll be able to do this in places. No, they mm-hmm. cut, they took that away too. But they uh, can't oh, take the, away. hey, does that hit? Yeah, it does. Well, we'll have none of that. That's right. World. But they can't take away Lucy chewing gum, no matter how much. Well, you could just tell them it's bubble gum. Tell them to fuck yeah. off. It ain't none of their business. You keep yeah. chewing it and they could kiss your ass. That's what, that's what Lucy's for. It's 2021. Get rid of your cigarettes, unplug the vape, throw out your dip, and get some Lucy nicotine gum or lozenges. It is very much the real deal. A subscription Mm -hmm. to Lucy comes directly to your door every month. It's so simple. You don't even have to leave your house because Lucy's got delivery down. So, well-read listeners, go to lucy.co and use the promo code RED. That's R-E-D to get 20% off all products, including gum or lozenges. That's lucy.co and use the promo code RED at checkout. As always, I'm legally required to give this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. And I always add, which hits? Lucy.co and be sure to use that promo code RED. And we thank Lucy for sponsoring the podcast. What else we got, Cho? I'll tell you what, Trey. Lucy number one! (laughs) (laughs) I hate myself. Ah, well, we love you. (laughs) Trey, Trey, you are a, uh, you're a father of two lunatic boys, correct? Am I wrong? Oh, you're very much right. Well, and because, look, because of that, I understand, uh, especially during the pandemic, when you're home all the time, dinner time, probably a little chaotic around your parts, right? You have no idea. Well, with Freshly, it's going to change your life. It's easy because their chefs take care of your meals a few nights of the week, and they take the pressure off of you, Trey Crowder. Yeah, that would hit for me. Uh, my son's, uh, well, one of them, one of them's a real picky eater, but the other one, he likes Freshly. We got some Freshly to try it out, and it uh, we're all into it. Me, him, and Mama, we dig them all. Freshly offers chef-made, nutrient-packed, delicious meals delivered fresh to your door, never frozen, and no cooking required. Uh, shopping for groceries, cooking can be a pain in the ass, especially now with Freshly. You don't have to. Your meals arrive to cook and fresh every r- week, so you can keep your fridge stocked and skip the trip to the store. Yeah. And ordering is easy, Cho. Yeah. All you got to do is visit Freshly.com. Choose from over 30 delicious, satisfying, better for you meals. Better for you. That's a, that's huge with me right now. You know, you boys getting swole. You seen, you know, uh, mm-hmm. like the steak peppercorn, sausage baked penne, or their chicken pesto bowl. And it's not here on the copy, but I would like to put over real quick the uh, buffalo chicken and cauliflower and the, uh, the mashed cauliflower that me and my wife had uh, this week which is absolutely tremendous freshly can fit your lifestyle i got some carb smart ones with a variety of plans uh, and meals to pick from that work for your dietary needs preferences taste family size and now our listeners they can try freshly for just 6 16 per meal stop searching the internet for healthy food near me every night and start living life freshly your meals are always delivered fresh, never frozen, the rate of heat, and enjoy in just three minutes. With new meals added each week, Freshly brings the convenience of chef-made, nutritionist-designed classics right to your kitchen. So here's what you do right now. Freshly is offering our listeners $40 off your first two orders when you go to Freshly.com slash well-read. That's well, R-E-D. Stop stressing about dinner. Go to Freshly.com slash well-read for $40 off your first two orders. That's Freshly.com slash well-read. For forty dollars off your first two orders, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Start living your life freshly. Freshly number one. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like Freshly's going to be short. Feel shorted on the racism there a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Number three. Number three. Number three. Number one. <laughs> I lose some steam with my racism. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Okay. Well, fuck. Let's let's get into it. Speaking of racism. Uh, racism too sharp oh. you you and by the way i had to fill the group in on this because you you i get i don't know if you were like oh let me have this experience first but like i found out through uh you know our manager 
uh, Nat, she hollered at me and she's like, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but Tushar is about to have dinner with the one and only Alex Jones. And I was Alex like, mother Jones. fucker, what? So please, 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 in as excruciating detail as you can, we want to know what led up to this experience and we want to know what that experience was like. So like um, Akash, who's a co-host of the Flagrant 2 podcast, he's, uh, he's my brother. He's, he's, I've known him for forever and he's been, I pretty much like stay with him. He just got an apartment in Manhattan. They came, the podcast came back from Miami. So uh, I'm really close to him and his wife and it's very like a brotherly thing. Um, so I stay, since I'm homeless right now, I stay between my sister's place in Princeton and crash with them in Manhattan. And um, we had come back from, I think, Kansas City that weekend um, for a weekend of shows. And I was planning to leave on Monday, go back to Princeton, but I decided to stay for another night. And he calls around three when uh, they had Alex Jones on the podcast for the second time. And the first time got flagged by YouTube and taken down and it went viral pretty much. What did he say? What did yeah. Alex Jones say? Yeah, yeah. They got on the him first flagged. podcast, he pretty much said the vac, and this is like November, he's like the vaccine gives you the C word. Like within the few first few minutes, you basically like the, the vaccine cunts? gives you cancer. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, cooter. No, no. Yeah, they, okay. <laughs> so basically, because of uh, of that, YouTube flagged it, took it down. They thought about reposting it or whatever. I think there's sec like pieces out in the world, but th the whole episode is not out anymore. So they're like, let's have them back. Smart move, obviously, on their end to have someone like that back on on the on the podcast. And um, so he calls around three or four. He's like, "Yo, you want to come to dinner with us?" And I was like, uh, yeah, I mean, that's an experience that I'm not going to forget. And they're going to go to some steakhouse, Wolfgang Pucks, downtown Tribeca. And Is Alex Jones buying? Uh, I don't know any of that. I know, I know yeah. just I'm not buying at the right, end. Yeah, you're day. not. You're not. Yeah, right. And uh, so I so me and uh, Akash's wife uh, were both like we plan to come down there. The dinner is at like nine. We don't get there till super late because women be getting ready. They do. And, they do. Um, also shopping. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was kind of, I don't, did you guys watch the actual podcast episode? No, no, no I didn't. Know. I didn't even know. I, that's feel like I, didn't, I don't think I knew the context. No, me either. I was yeah. waiting to talk to you. So for the, for the, for you guys and the, whoever's listening, uh, pause right now, go check out another three hour podcast, <laughs> but they had Alex Jones on the flagrant two podcast. And that thing went wild. I mean, he is one of really, is, I really, <laughs> I mean, he's just a wild, wild kid. And it just doesn't it just, it's just it, that whenever he's on, they kind of let him loose and they're not trying to fact check him or fight him. They basically get him fucked up and they let him go. And he goes wild with them. I love that. You're acting like, they decided to do something different with Alex Jones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They Take a slightly different in. approach. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else is always raining Alex Jones. Yeah. And and we're well, just going to get decided no more of that. No, we're but I'm saying like, fucked up and just turn him loose. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like when he's, I don't know. I haven't watched him too much. I've seen him on Rogan, I think. And I've seen, but like, usually I imagine when he's on, the man's he's on got his... one speed to Char is what I'm trying. And, and I think it's literally speed. Yeah. <laughs> he's um so he he he's this he's this he's just character of a person and um on on their podcast specifically they they basically are laughing with him and at him and and it and he's like at the core and they talk about this on their podcast like he's a comedian like if he didn't veer into this whatever the hell represent whatever the hell he represents like he had at his core, he's an entertainer with like right. funny thoughts. And if he just, Akash said this well, he's like, if you just scale it back like 20% and add a few tags, you are one of the, you know, best working comics well, around. Right. If you scale it back 20%, add a few tags, and also don't try to pretend like this very, very dangerous shit that you're saying is real. Right. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Cause like, like, here's the deal. I, when you when when you when I found out that you were having dinner with Alex Jones and Alex Jones doing a podcast, I was like, "Fuck yeah, that's awesome." Here's where my maybe I, I guess woke hypocrisy comes in. Um, if I found out some of my white buddies were going to dinner with Alex Jones and having him on their podcast, I'd be like, "Are y'all fucking serious right now?" You know what I'm saying? Like I, I because like it'd be like, at what point are we just perpetuating 
his right, bullshit right. and giving him a platform. But admittedly, because you're brown, I'm like, you're allowed. You know okay. what I mean? Like, you can do it. It's fine. It, I don't think it for me. It has nothing to do with uh, two stars brownness. First time for everything, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just trying to like. I'm I, just trying I, to be up front with where I'm at. Like, I'll admit that's with true. Jones, like I like. Because it's, I have to constantly remind myself where Alex Jones is concerned that somehow it boggles my mind, but somehow people listen to him. A great many people like sincerely listen yeah. to him and take him Believe seriously. It. And that changes everything because I have to remind myself of that because when I listen to him, like I listen to him on Rogan and stuff like that, I'm cracking up. I'm laughing. Dying laughing. The whole time he is funny. I'm, I'm, I'm like, dude. This Trump was funny. Fucker is a lunatic, like in a entertaining. Like I laugh at it because to me, it's like no one could ever possibly take this shit seriously. This motherfucker is wild and and just like sheer entertainment value, and I enjoy it. And it, almost to the point where it's like, goddamn, am I a fan of Alex Jones? Right, <laughs> right, like, right, right, right. But a fan of his, like, I'm a fan of how fucking you're a fan of Alex Jones the same way that you're a fan is. of the Die Hard franchise. Purely right. for an entertainment purpose. Right. And, but then, and so, and like when people talk about Joe Rogan or whoever, like platforming him and stuff like that, I'll, I, my knee jerk reaction is to get defensive because I'm like, dude, listen to the shit he's saying. Right. But like, but, but people, they do. It's listen. the same way with Trump. It's like, fucking Trump, it man. Sincerity. And so I, I have to always remind myself of that because like, it blows my mind that that is the case, but it is the case. And so it's like, you know, it makes, it changes the flavor of how you look at the guy, in my yeah. opinion. I mean, I, I, in an ideal sense, he would go away in his kind of, um, what's the worst venomous thoughts would kind of erode, but he's so good at entertaining. Yeah. Just being in a room entertaining uh, and he happens to be talking about something that he's very, very, very well versed, educated. He knows all the history. Like, there's no messing with that guy in, in that department. Um, it's also complicated, too, because, like, of this great experiment, you know, that we have called America. And we do have freedom of speech, which obviously what people confuse with, like, that doesn't – YouTube doesn't have freedom of speech. You know what I'm saying? Like America that YouTube doesn't, if YouTube decides as a company that they don't want your shit on there, they are very much allowed to take that shit off. Facebook, same way. Twitter's the same thing. Anybody that's smart knows that freedom of speech only protects you from the government arresting you for some bullshit you say, unless the thing that you say is threatening a government official or possibly inciting a riot towards a government official or government entity. We all know that. But at the same, so at the same time, though, you're like, oh, th this guy obviously should be allowed to say whatever technically that he wants. But the things that he says are dangerous. And in my opinion, people have been killed because of Alex Jones. I don't know that you can necessarily like go, oh, here's an example of that. Here's an example of that. But when you look at what happened on January 6th, that was all because of the rhetoric of people like Alex Jones. Now you flip that shit around and I say that and I truly believe that. But to play devil's advocate a little bit, a lot of, like, you know, super right-wing Christians go, okay, well, we truly believe that abortion is murder. So when y'all go around saying, hey, woman's right to choose, blah, 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 y'all are advocating what we believe is absolutely just as tyrannical of an idea. So should y'all be allowed to say that? And is Joe Biden not just... By the, and obviously that's not fucking true. I'm just saying like we with dudes like Alex Jones and with me being someone who obviously believes in free speech, you really kind of get into the weeds of like, what the fuck do I believe and how can I make this all make sense to me? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you're saying that there's there's a counterweight to his to him. Yeah, like it's AOC like AOC or someone who's it, just like it, it's hard. I can't fucking sit here and go. He should have be put a muzzle on and then go, well, what about all the stuff you, well, the stuff I believe is fine, but like, it is, <laughs> no, I'm like, but like, where do you fuck it? Like, there's just, the, it, it's just one of them gray areas that like, I don't really know what, I don't know what to do with a guy like that. You know what I mean? And I don't know. I, I, the guy, the guy is so like, so we show up to dinner. The dinner started at like nine. We got there at nine 50. So we That's got a there. fucking Damn. insane Alex Jones thing. Because he's been on fucking crank all day. Yeah. He's just hungry <laughs> at nine. 
<laughs> and uh, but also, like, I'm not trying to cast aspersions on this particular wom- woman if it was indeed her fault since women right. been getting ready. But yeah. 50 minutes, that's like, that's a little egregious. <laughs> it, was a, yeah. it was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, but like, are you trying so- to fuck Alex Jones? Put on a sweatshirt. <laughs> exactly so yeah, like know. uh we show up it's in the private room of a private room it's one of those situations and there's uh alex his wife you think they did that because they were like okay we'll take alex jones's money but we don't want nobody to know his yeah. ass is here so let's put him between this bamboo sheets um no it was actually oddly not, i don't i don't know pro- probably but I, I imagine he can't just be in public he's one of those i'm <laughs> sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. He, can't. he can't be in the na- in nature in regular nature natural setting and uh by the time we got there the food had just literally been been brought to the table and um you know it's 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 a few people from the podcast it's akash it's um Andrew and his wife and then there's like four or five people who I didn't know one I think ran another podcast one was a producer guy but they were kind of on the other side of the table and um, you know he, there was nothing they were clearly beat from the day like in terms of hanging out they with had Alex a Jones. three yeah they had a three hour podcast episode and once again if you watch it they were fucked up by the end at least you know Andrew and and the, the and Alex were like pretty drunk. They had CBD during the episode. They were like they were having a good time. And right. um, I the, what I liked about the episode itself is that Alex Media, the guy who is their sound kind of engineer guy who who's on the thing itself, he kind of starts grilling him about the actual um, Capitol riots and what his part yeah. was, and he kind of masterfully swayed in and out of. Like I was there and I had, and I didn't have anything and I talked to Trump, but I don't talk to Trump. Like you're just kind of like, yeah, you're part of it, but you seem to cover your bases to, to protect yourself legally in terms of saying anything. Um, and then during the dinner, it was actually quite chill. Like there was nothing crazy. They talked about the highlights. Like he kept on asking, it was like, what do you think the best part of the podcast was? And kind of uh, a few back and forths. They talked about Russia and Russian involvement, but that was kind of on the other side of the table and i didn't must say much like i talked to like a gosh and just lean like i didn't really like talk much out loud because i kind of know my place in that room <laughs> like i'm not trying to be loud but it was just fent- this is just incredible view to watch someone like andrew schultz who's a uh, goliath in, in our little comedy world oh, yeah. and and then alex zone sitting next to them and they're both kind of holding court and they're they're sparring back and forth in terms of like making fun of each other and uh we talked about Akash's wedding, which is this weekend, and uh, how Alex needs to come and stuff like that. So My it was God. like, it, it was like, you, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't think he'd be like a wild, crazy guy in a setting like that. And he wasn't. He was just kind of a, and he had his wife there. So he was kind of chilled out. Which is because it's, he wasn't on. You know what I mean? He like wasn't that, on. on. Yeah, no yeah, cameras. Like, there's like no, that he's guy. just kind of, yeah. Because there's always been part of me that feels like that part where you said it, that guy's an entertainer. And by the way, that doesn't, none of that justifies any of the shit that he does. Like it doesn't, you know, like, yeah, yeah. like, you know, we said with Trump, people were like, oh, he's not really racist. He just says all those things because he knows it appeals to the base. It's like, well, dude, if you pretend to be a racist, you're a racist. At the end of the day, like that doesn't, you know, I don't mean that for like Archie Bunker, like that guy was yeah, literally yeah. acting as a character in the show. But like at the end of the day, if you say these things, those things hold weight. But there's part of me that has kind of always felt like with Alex Jones that like he says those fucking crazy things like, you know, they, oh, they put, uh, uh stuff in the water to make the frogs gay so they can make a like I, i'm like he says all that stuff so that later when he you know tries to stoke the fire of an insurrection he can be like yeah i say a lot of shit say, you know what i mean I'm, like, I'm, a, yeah. I'm also the guy who said uh mm. that that birds aren't he, real you know what i'm saying so like what does it really matter his main from what i could tell just listening to these few interviews is like his main thing is whenever you turn to him and he's like, Hey, why are you saying these things against these minorities or whatever? He'll turn it into the globalists are after everyone. Yeah. Right. He'll just turn it to the globalists and then you can't argue with that. It's a good argument. The globalists yeah. are to some degree doing the things that he's saying. So he's so good at crafting an argument in that thing and getting you kind of like, okay, okay. I see where you're going. And then he'll take a weird right turn and you're, you're like, Oh, okay. But it, yeah, I don't know. My understanding but, but, of his whole deal that I've read before is that like, there's usually the tiniest little like kernel of some kind of truth or accuracy to like where he begins, you know, 
is that trap he's making like it's based on something and i don't know what but like even the fucking gay frogs there's probably some kind of chemical that got spilled that like change the sex of certain species of frogs or something right. like that you know like i mean hell and jurassic but then it's, park yeah but then it's like <laughs> they're know, doing like it on it, purpose because they don't want to documentary reproduce. jurassic park uh where yeah. The, the <laughs> yeah, yeah natural life finds a way something like that may exist i don't know and then like but taking that and turning it into the part of this like you know far-flung insane conspiracy theory he just takes shit and just goes fully off the rails with it you know which again it's like to me entertaining because I don't even come close to taking any of it seriously, yeah. but I just, I know that a lot of people do, which is so wild. To well, me. the, the I thing mean, is too, is like, he says some things that are like true, but it's like, yeah, but they hit but the things he's saying, like they don't hit for him, but they hit from, you know, like, but they're re- like, he'll say things like, you know, like we're turning into a globalist society. And it's like, yeah, that internet has done that. Like for sure. Like, you know, with trade and Amazon and like, shit like yes we are you're right we are this world is now smaller than it's ever been because we can have constant communication with someone from across the world and you do have to think about things in terms of that but like big businesses have always been globally focused you know what i'm saying like people like big businesses like movies for instance has always been a global thing like these blockbusters like yes that's true but then he just goes on and screams about it it's like brother i don't know what the fuck you think what can we do about that and also like it doesn't have to be like why why is that 100 percent a bad thing and realistically the reason that they think it's 100 percent a bad thing is because they are xenophobic assholes you know what i'm saying but like glo- like globalism at its root isn't in my opinion necessarily like just this huge evil thing i mean i i'm willing to be wrong i guess <laughs> Um, I, I honestly don't know enough about it. To I'm just saying, like, if just the, just the term, just the term in, in terms of, like, when people go, oh, we, we don't take care of our own first, you know, like, that's the constant critique from some people on the right with whenever a, a, a Democratic president is like, oh, yeah, they want to go take care of this country and this country and this country, but what about Detroit? And it's like, motherfucker, y'all been in charge for eight years. You didn't do a goddamn thing about Detroit neither. You know what I'm saying? And then the second you do, they go globalism, 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 globalism. But then when it comes to their fucking whole big business model and they're like, we got to support Amazon. Amazon's one of the most globalist goddamn institutions in the world. Like, to me, all they do with the term globalism is use it to stoke the fire of xenophobic nationalists. That's all it is. Yeah, no, I think you're right about that. Yeah, because to me, like, the idea, it would hit if we were, like, the United Earth Federation or yeah, something the, like that. Yeah. And, it, like, and that was just one country. You know, like, in future sci-fi, when humans live on the moon just, and Mars and right. shit like that, and it's, like, it's always, it's a- always they go to, like, all of earth is one right. there's like a president of earth, of earth. you know yeah, yeah. and then there's a consulate of mars or whatever right. yeah, yeah yeah and it's, it's like that that idea hits for me that general concept hits for me but it's, one thing can't go to like, war how with how itself never mind I'm that, from the South, you know what i mean again. right yeah. like it seems highly unrealistic because of all the shit you're talking about and how fired up people get about the very concept that we could get to be that unified and of course and this is all the shit with aliens recently. There's some people saying that this is the reason the government's lying about aliens, which I don't buy, but it would have to be some kind of like existential crisis that threatens the entire species at once. That would, the only thing that I just watched that movie, the tomorrow war. And that's kind of did it hit for you. Like, yeah, it did hit for me. It's It's a dumb action sci-fi. I like movie. that. I like yeah. dumb. I do too. Yeah. It's like, turn your brain <laughs> off and enjoy it. But good. I, mean, I need guys, that. I liked it, but it's a big plot point in there that, this existential threat bands the entire human race together at a certain point. And I do think that that would 9/11. be 9-11, but it had to be some real shit. Yeah. But dude, that wasn't the whole human race. No, no, no. I just mean, I've experienced it in a micro sense is what I'm saying. A mi- that, yeah. Right. And so like, I do know that that shit exists like outside of something like that. And it would have to be like aliens. Cause a fucking yeah. pandemic didn't do it. Didn't nope. even come close. It, was the nope. exact it made it worse. It would have to be like an alien war or some shit. I, I don't think. even think that would help. I, I know. Yeah. Because again, like what's like the pandemic, like was as global of a crisis right. as we're ever going to see. And and it like had the opposite effect. If it was aliens, I could see them being like, like, oh yeah, good. Now the aliens showed up. Just one more thing for a Democrat to fuck in the butt. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? I will say, and this is maybe just being too optimistic or something. Cause yeah, the, 
not a good takeaway from COVID where this argument is concerned, but I do wonder if COVID made it easy for a lot of those people to be that way, in my opinion, meaning like right. the anti-maskers and it's because like COVID is so, you know, you can get it and be fine. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You can also get it and fucking die, but you can yeah. get it and be fine. And so a lot, people, that a lot of people do get it and they were fine. And they're like, so it fucking ain't shit. You know what I mean? Which made it worse. If it was like, if COVID was like some Ebola shit, right? That, like you're fucking throwing your guts out of your yeah. mouth at the next day, fucking just yeah. spew, exorcist puking fucking blood everywhere and shit. I think it might be a little bit of a different story. It, this is all that. I, I, I know this isn't what you're trying to do. Effect on us that we're talking about where COVID didn't maybe. Yeah, I know. I know this isn't really, but what you're trying to say. But when you boil it down, it's funny to think like if only, if COVID had been worse, it would have ultimately been better. You know what I'm saying? I don't like know, it would have. I don't step know if it, it up, COVID. Better, but yeah. I, this idea, this like, what would it take to actually unify yeah, yeah. us as a species? Ebola. And we were like, clearly a pandemic doesn't work. And I'm saying, well, I, maybe a like if it was the black plague, metal hardcore pandemic. Yeah. It that might maybe i don't know but i mean it would take something yeah the 50 of us left would repopulate and be cool with each other for a minute you know don't you love the uh the delta variant yeah it's so funny that's like they had to rebrand it because the triple mutant mumbai strain is harder to swallow (laughs) yeah way harder to swallow but okay i guess the question vaccines still affect it it's like yeah the vaccine's they, like 95 plus percent effective on regular COVID, and it's like almost 90 percent against the Delta variant, or whatever. It's like, dude, I'll take that. I'm just trying not to fuck. It does seem better. Delta variant. I hate it. Here's the deal I haven't heard <laughs> oh, of, shit. and it, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but like I was starting to, you know, there a couple months back, like people around here, like it got to Chickamauga, and there were some people dying from Chickamauga. I haven't even heard of any Delta variant. No, 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 no. Just COVID. But the Delta okay. variant's been out for a minute, right? I heard of someone in San Diego, one of my, uh, uh, one of the guys who was, uh, other guy who traveled from New York, his cousin's roommate got, she was fully vaccinated and she got the Delta variant. And she, I'll tell you, I'll tell you when it'll hit its peak is right when our tour is starting to go well, is what it'll do. We'll, we'll be, <laughs> no, Corey. Uh, I'm just saying, like, even though I live in one of the statistically, most unvaccinated areas in the country i haven't heard shit about i haven't heard a a covid case in a while which is nice you know what i'm saying i'm not saying it's not happening in other places maybe they're just not but i was hearing it a lot here and now i'm i'm not i don't know if like more people were getting vaccinated than what i thought or if it like genuinely had it by now yeah i mean i i genuinely don't know it just like it it feels better but maybe that's just like me really 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 wanting just like ah we're over it i know we're not over it but like that's it does feel like okay we're still coming out the other side of this even though then i'll turn on the tv sometimes like fuck man this second wave of the new thing like god damn i can't it's gonna happen it's gonna pop up again when the weather changes into cold and it's flu season supposedly so end of the year basically uh the question but but, the when that happens though if you're vaccinated the odds are still really good that you're cool right and yeah, i yeah, saw yeah. the fauci said like 99 plus percent of all covid related deaths in the past x number of months or whatever are unvaccinated people yeah like which you know checks out yeah <laughs> yeah but I'm this saying, week like, in no shit sherlock news I, my whole thing with the fact like and I know I'm ignorant and I just don't, I, there's part, I'm just not understanding part of it, but my whole thing since the vaccines came out and became widely available and it's like, Oh, well, can people stop wearing masks? Oh, I'm not sure. You know, whatever that whole thing. It's like, if you get the vaccine, you know, there's a small chance you can still get it. It should be less harmful if you do, but if, I mean like nine, it doesn't stop you from getting it. The vaccine supposedly doesn't stop you from getting it. It just suppresses all whatever bad outcomes and you get from it. Well, Meaning whatever. you can still easily pl- pass it on if it if it if you have it with the so, vaccine. So, yeah, right. But it, it, but if you've got the vaccine, it helps your chances of it not being as bad when it happens to you. In other words, fucking get the vaccine. Ninety five percent chance. I'm saying. Right. So it's yeah. like. So I'm saying like. And then the people that choose not to get it, they're the only ones that can get it, but they can't give it 95% chance. They can't give it to us. 
the vaccinated people, right? So like, I don't know, just just get it, just do it, just, just do it, just get the vaccine for sure, absolutely, one hundred percent. I'm saying get the fucking vaccine, but I'm saying like as far as getting things back to normal, Delta variant and all that shit aside, if if, if the vaccine is still effective against that, and the vaccine's been available to people, people have the option to get it or not at this point, and I'm just like. Let's just fucking go like people like at what point are people, you know, making their own choice where all this shit is concerned. Like if you get vaccinated, you should be okay, generally speaking. So fucking like because otherwise my thing is like, I don't even know what we're doing here. Right. With the vaccine and all that shit in the first place. Like if it doesn't mean that we can get back to normal or something resembling it, then like, what's the fucking point? Right. I just. (laughs) Yeah, I don't done. know. I'm just done. I'm done too. Because vaccine is hair. Get I'm, it or get it. And get it. Fucking go. Get like, it so you can come out and see us. Yes. At the Well Read Out the House tour, you can get those tickets at WellReadComedy.com. W e l l r e d Comedy.com. Tickets are moving fast. Uh, if you don't see your city on the website, doesn't mean we're not booking it. it just means we ain't booked it yet. Because in t- 2022, the the list of proposed cities, my God, we're gonna be everywhere. And uh, depending on where he is, Tushar also joins us on the road from time to time. So look forward to that. I personally, Tushar, if you are around Atlanta, Tushar will be with us yeah, at the Atlanta show wait. or shows in mid September. I say or shows because we may add another night. Yeah, because it's depends. about sold out. I'm so. working on a uh, chunk of material specifically for your audience. Oh, right. that means it's gonna be racist. Hey. All right. Uh, so well read, com- <laughs> well read comedy.com, Tushar. Thank you, as always, for being here. Yeah. Thanks, fellas. Thanks for having me. Love you guys. All right. Uh, Thank you all for listening to the Well Read Show. We'd love to stick around longer, but we got to go. Tune in next week if you got nothing to do. Thank you. God bless you. Good night and skew. Good night and skew. All right. Good night and skew. (laughs) There it is. (laughs) There the Rednecks, they like cornbread, but sex they care way too much, but don't give a fuck. They're the liberal rednecks that makes some people upset, but they got three big old dicks that you can suck.